The Sahara Desert, a name that evokes images of endless sand dunes, extreme heat, and one of the harshest environments on Earth. Spanning over 9 million square kilometers, it is the largest hot desert in the world, covering much of North Africa. For centuries, the Sahara has been considered inhospitable to most forms of life, a place where survival is a daily battle against nature's extremes. But recent findings have challenged this long-standing image. In certain parts of this vast desert, patches of greenery, forests, even, are appearing. How is this happening? And what does it mean for the future of one of the planet's most unforgiving landscapes? To understand why forests are emerging in the Sahara, we need to examine a mix of natural processes, human activity, and climatic changes. The surprising rise of vegetation in such an arid region is not a miracle. It is a result of measurable, observable phenomena. First, let's consider the Sahara's climate history. The region has not always been a desert. About 6,000 to 8,000 years ago, during a period known as the African Humid Period, the Sahara was a lush and fertile landscape, vastly different from the arid expanse we see today. This era was marked by a significant increase in rainfall, driven by shifts in the Earth's orbital patterns that enhanced monsoon activity across northern Africa. During this time, the Sahara was dotted with rivers, lakes, and wetlands, creating a thriving ecosystem that supported a diverse array of plant and animal life. Studies of ancient lake beds, such as those found at the site of Lake Megachad, reveal that this body of water was once one of the largest freshwater lakes in the world, covering an area larger than modern-day Germany. Similarly, the presence of now-dry river channels, such as the Tamanrasit River system, indicates that extensive waterways once flowed through the region. Archaeological evidence reveals that early human civilizations flourished in this verdant environment. Rock art found in places like the Tassili Enaja Plateau in Algeria and the Gilf Keba region in Egypt depicts scenes of people herding cattle, fishing, and engaging in agricultural activities. These findings suggest that the Sahara was home to thriving communities that relied on its rich natural resources for their livelihoods. Fossilized pollen, seeds, and animal remains further confirm the presence of dense vegetation and abundant wildlife, including species such as elephants, giraffes, and crocodiles, which are now confined to more tropical regions. However, this period of abundance came to an end as a result of gradual but profound climatic changes. Approximately 5,000 years ago, the Earth's orbital patterns began to shift, altering the distribution of solar energy received by the planet. This, in turn, weakened the monsoon systems that had sustained the Sahara's lush conditions. Over the course of millennia, rainfall decreased, rivers dried up, and vegetation gradually gave way to the encroaching sands. The transition from a fertile savanna to a desert was not abrupt but rather a slow and uneven process, with pockets of vegetation persisting in some areas longer than others. By around 3,000 years ago, the Sahara had largely taken on its current arid form. This transformation forced human populations to migrate in search of more hospitable environments, contributing to the spread of agricultural practices and the development of complex societies along the Nile River and other regions. Despite this dramatic shift, the Sahara's history as a once green landscape underscores the dynamic nature of Earth's climate systems. It serves as a powerful reminder that the Sahara's environment is not static but rather highly responsive to changes in atmospheric conditions and solar radiation. These historical variations also highlight the potential for future changes in the region, depending on the interplay of natural climate cycles and human-induced factors. In recent decades, researchers have identified a curious phenomenon, an increase in vegetation in some areas of the Sahara. Satellite data from NASA and other agencies shows that parts of the southern Sahara, particularly in the Sahel region, are experiencing what is known as greening, the Sahel, a semi-arid transition zone between the Sahara Desert and the savannas to the south, has seen a notable increase in plant cover over the past 40 years. This greening is largely attributed to changes in rainfall patterns. Studies reveal that since the 1980s, there has been a modest but significant increase in precipitation in parts of the Sahel and the Sahara's southern edges. While the region still experiences periodic droughts, the overall trend has brought slightly more rain, enough to support vegetation growth in areas that were previously barren. Human activity has also played a critical role. In countries like Niger, Mali, 
and Burkina Faso, local communities have adopted innovative farming and land management practices to combat desertification. One notable example is Farmer Managed Natural Regeneration, or FMNR, which encourages the growth of native trees and shrubs on degraded farmland. This practice has led to the restoration of millions of hectares of land, creating green oases where there was once bare soil. The results of these efforts are remarkable. In Niger alone, an estimated 200 million trees have been regrown through FMNR and other initiatives. These trees provide not only ecological benefits, such as soil stabilization and carbon sequestration, but also economic benefits. Local communities harvest firewood, fruits, and fodder from these trees, supporting their livelihoods. The rise of forests in the Sahara is also influenced by broader environmental factors. For example, increased atmospheric carbon dioxide levels have been linked to improved plant growth in arid regions. Known as the CO2 fertilization effect, this phenomenon occurs because higher levels of carbon dioxide enhance photosynthesis, allowing plants to grow in conditions where water is scarce. However, this explanation is not without controversy. Some scientists argue that the benefits of CO2 fertilization are overstated and that other factors, such as soil degradation and water scarcity, limit the potential for widespread vegetation in the Sahara. The role of climate change in the greening of the Sahara is also complex. While some models suggest that rising global temperatures could increase rainfall in parts of the Sahara, others warn that climate change could exacerbate desertification in other areas. Predicting the future of the Sahara's vegetation is an ongoing challenge, requiring careful analysis of local and global factors. Another key factor is international efforts to combat desertification. One of the most ambitious projects in this regard is the African Union's Great Green Wall Initiative. Launched in 2007, this project aims to create a 15-kilometer wide belt of trees stretching across the Sahel, from Senegal in the west to Djibouti in the east. While progress has been slower than anticipated, the initiative has already led to the planting of millions of trees and the restoration of thousands of hectares of degraded land. Critics of the Great Green Wall point out that simply planting trees is not enough to transform the region. Trees require water, and in a region already strained by limited resources, the long-term viability of these forests is uncertain. Nevertheless, the project has brought attention to the importance of sustainable land management and the need for local community involvement. Despite these successes, the rise of forests in the Sahara does not signal a reversal of desertification across the entire region. The Sahara remains an extreme environment, and the patches of greenery represent localized changes rather than a widespread transformation. Moreover, challenges such as population growth, overgrazing, and resource conflicts continue to threaten the fragile ecosystems of the Sahel and Sahara. As we look to the future, the greening of the Sahara offers valuable lessons about the intersection of climate, ecology, and human action. Whether this trend continues will depend on our ability to address the challenges of desertification, climate change, and resource management on a global scale.